So we just finished up with the monitoring plan and how the document has to really uh, be prepared. And this is just a basic uh, document. Uh, now, of course, it depends practically speaking upon what is a project. So basic model of a monitoring plan should consist of a project overview, including the scope of the project, the progress chain, targets, and a milestone reference must be there, strategic plan that is devised, including contingency plan and the plan to uh, you know, achieve the, uh, the, the, the project. It could also include you know, integrated chain, change plan. Like uh, suppose there are any changes, then you'll have to adopt integrated change plan and how the change, you cannot just directly implement the change. You need to seek uh, relevant approval so that the plan has to be charted out there. Then is monitoring Gantt chart. Monitoring Gantt chart. So which is normally used and use a monitoring Gantt chart and use those tabs, relevant tabs there with all the necessary pointers uh, and also incorporate the causation aspect of it and so on. The next part is of course, monitoring approaches and methods. What are the different monitoring approaches? We had stopped here, basic, uh, as far as, yeah, we stopped at this slide last time. So here, monitoring approaches as specified in ADS, that is USAID report, are performance monitoring, context monitoring, and complementary monitoring. So as identified by USAID, abbreviated ADS 201 report, they say that there are basically three forms of monitoring, you know, practically speaking, as well as even theoretically and practically, performance monitoring, performance monitoring, context monitoring, and complementary monitoring. Let's see what's performance monitoring. So ADS 201 defines performance monitoring as the ongoing and systematic collection of performance indicator data and other quantitative or qualitative information to reveal whether implementation is on track and whether expected results are being achieved. So basically, it is uh, you know gathering quantitative as well as qualitative information and studying and examining the implementation process and see whether it is on track to trace the implementation process and see whether the project is on track, what is the status of the project, and whether the expected results are being achieved, even vis-a-vis -vis the, the milestones that are being achieved. So that is how you monitor performance. Next is context. Monitoring. Now, this refers to a method methodical collection of uh, information about the status of a particular project, including the external factors such as the political environment, the increase in prices of additional raw materials, and so on. So that may be relevant to the implementation and performance of a project. So the project strategy and project activities. So this approach basically examines conditions that may have direct impact on the implementation of a project. I'm repeating. So this approach, that is a context monitoring approach, examines conditions that may have a direct impact on the implementation of the project and takes into consideration assumptions as well, risks, and that may be, you know, uh, convoluted in a project. So the next approach is complementary monitoring. Complementary monitoring is normally used in complex situations or dynamic or changing environments or in a dynamic context where results are not directly predictable. However, it can measure unpremeditated results, that which is not predictable, that could not be really foreseen or forecasted, and allied factors that have an influence on the result. There are some other approaches, one of which you already know, that is the logical framework approach is used even in you know, monitoring. So LFA approach is a goal-oriented approach and that aids to review the project progress and take corrective action during the subsistence of the project. Next is it takes into consideration project goals, project outputs. That is, the, what is the expected results as verifiable indicators and assumptions. So what it takes into con consideration, one is goal and what is the output. The goal of the project, the purpose of the project, what the project has really achieved, or what are the expected results. Project goal, project outputs. So this approach uses diagrams and wall charts and is used as a tool for ironing out the purpose of the project, the strategy to achieve the purpose of the project and organizing the deployed means. So it also is used to analyze project operations, the progress of the project, the results of the project and impact of the project or in the impact of the performance, even while the study performance indicators and the impact 
impact is important as well. So long frame is also an instrument for engaging stakeholders, investors, and employers of the project and seek clarification on the objectives, purposes of the, the project and accordingly design activities. So it's also used to improve the quality of the project and program design and for summarizing project operational plans. And the, however, the demerit of this approach is that it needs you know, periodical training and follow-up. Now here, a good project manager, uh, you know, as I said earlier, there is a possibility, of course it needs periodical training and follow-up, but if he wants, and if it tries to exceed the budget, a project manager can try to retire those expenses and cut off those expenses and try his best how to keep the, uh, you know, see that project implementation is within, is cost effective and is within the budget that is actually, you know, devised during the beginning of the project and what is actually allocated for the project and it's, you know, handed over to him, uh, you know, on the charts. So the time, the, apart from that, the time for implementation of the LFA depends on the project scope and the profundity of the project, that is the depth of the project participatory process. So again, I'm repeating the time of implementation, the time that is taken for implementation of logical framework approach for preparation of monitoring plan or for monitoring plan depends on the project scope and the profundity of or the depth of the project participatory process. Next is impact evaluation technique. As the name suggests, it studies the impact, it evaluates the impact. It is an approach that examines the effect, which may be either positive or negative. What is the effect of a particular thing, uh, uh, the impact of it, whether it is positive or negative. So this approach is normally used for social projects, which measures the outcomes and the impact of outcomes distinct from allied external factors revolving around the project. Social, uh, what are the example of social projects? Exam example. COVID vaccination drive, social project. Um, infant vaccination for newborn babies, polio drops being given. All this is social projects. Uh, next is a uh, rapid uh, appraisal approach. So this approach includes techniques such as formal surveys and examination of performance indicators. Next is theory-based evaluation. So it can be best used for charting the design of complex activities while it aids in improving planning and management for timely identification of critical success factors or CSF and provides for swift addressal of problems by using what? But corrective actions or devising corrective actions. And this theory is also called as the program logic approach. What are the methods of monitoring? Now here, monitoring, monitoring methods can be adopted based on the type of the project that or what needs to be monitored and the stage at which the project is. So the stage at which the project is and what is the type of project accordingly, a particular method of monitoring would be used. So by and large, there are basically broadly classification, broad, broadly classific, classified into quantitative methods and qualitative methods. I'm repeating, monitoring methods can be broadly classified into quantitative and qualitative. Repeating again, because it's very simple. Quantitative, qualitative, broad classification of monitoring methods. Now, what is quantitative? Even without looking at the, uh, you know, the slide, quantitative something related to quantity. That means quantities are measured in numbers, right? So quantitative method, as the name itself suggests, uses numerical data and auditing techniques as well as a mode of evaluation. So this method is appropriate for evaluating and monitoring site working hours, site workers hours, financial auditing, resource auditing, and so on. So what is qualitative methods use, uh, 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 methods of monitoring? So quanti qualitative methods use conceptual data, such as monitoring meetings, analyzing minutes of the meeting, ascertaining or understanding the accomplishment of certain decisions taken during the meeting, which, uh, which the decisions might have been minuted, analyzing whether the, those minutes are implemented and, you know, having a, a, a analysis logs and so on. So this is quantitative methods. 
So it depends upon the type of the project and what stage the project is. Again, techniques. There is an RTM technique that is a requirement trace, uh, traceability matrix. There's control chart and this review of uh, you know, status and conducting uh, a review of status or conducting review meetings. What is RTM? RTM is requirements traceability matrix. You trace the requirements vis-a-vis -vis the scope of the project, the needs of the project, availability of resources, and so on. So requirements traceability matrix seeks to align requirements with deliverables. Project requirements and requirements uh, and requirements are charted out as a reference point and they have reference point documents and the progress and the status of the project are monitored given the two reference points. That is, they ensure that the new activities are not added to the scope of the project. I'm repeating, new activities are not added to the scope of the project. So here, therefore, they need, uh, they need to uh, you know, integrate, integrate the change you know, uh, in a way that it would really not go beyond the scope as well as be within the budget. So you have to use integrative techniques. In case there is an apprehension of going beyond the scope, so you cut it out, so that you do not work anything beyond the scope, give or, you know, or add on to your deliverables, which is not originally contracted, or if it goes beyond the budget, you seek necessary approvals. From whom? From the stakeholders, if they are there, if uh, the, whatever interested parties who are there, the, the interested parties or the employer of the project. So this ensures that new activities are not added to the scope of the project without approvals and amending relevant contracts to that effect. So next is control chart. Now this may be a uh, maybe univariate or multivariate. So this technique is concerned with project quality, and a univariate control chart concerns itself with a single variable or a single project task. And while multi uh, varied, of course, with multiple tasks or multiple variables. So next is reviewing meetings or review meetings may be arranged to review the status of the project, to address the limitations there, to examine causation, suggest and chart measures for ad lib or swift or immediate implementation. What is ad lib? That means um, some, uh, okay, extemporaneous or ad lib or something that you just have to take action immediately. So ad lib implementation, something which uh, they were not prepared for, but decision has to be taken right there. So ad lib implementation, I mean, for all these purposes, review meetings can be held. However, project goals should be kept in mind and And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I just removed the share by mistake. Project goals should be kept in mind and also the milestones. So this was all. Oh. Sorry, excuse me, teacher. We are not seeing anything. Yeah, it's by mistake. Yeah. I'm sorry for that. So. Yeah, I pull it up. So this is all what we studied for today. That is, we studied um, project monitoring, devising a monitoring plan. Yeah. Yeah, and then we went through the phases of the project, and then we did monitoring approaches, monitoring techniques, and monitoring methods as quantitative and qualitative, and so on. So, so what did you understand out of all of this? Why is monitoring required? Why is monitoring required? Now, having heard the lecture, why is monitoring required? Can we say that it's also about uh, sticking to the scope? If I say that changes also in the project should be monitored, am I right or wrong? Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. 
that. If I say that changes have to be monitored in a project, am I right or wrong? You are right. Right. That's what. So what is the purpose of monitoring is also to see that there are no new changes that are incorporated in a project. However, if there is a need for really incorporating any change or there is a, there is a necessary change that needs to be made, such changes have to have to be you know, approved by the concerned people. So if you are the project manager, if your team is busy executing the project, you as a project manager are busy monitoring, making sure that all the schedules, the timelines, the costs, the areas are properly implemented in the project. You are to make sure that in case there are any changes, they are properly processed, they are properly documented, and they integrated into the system. So therefore here, now, changes can be in, in terms of what? It could be in terms of resources, costs, and so on. So you are to monitor those changes and then integrate those changes for that, seek relevant approvals, and then implement it in your project. So while you're doing all this, that is to ensure the quality of work, quality of the deliverables, and that they are within the specific scope. Am I right? So this is all for your um, class today. Next, we will move further. I will be posting your um, your uh, your notes as well as PPT as well as um, of course the videos. So your attendance, I just take it down.